and welcome back to a uh, part three of our review of Wakanda Forever. Brian, let's discuss the performances of the lead act of the lead protagonist, the Black Panther and uh, the Submariner in this film, because those were the two leads; those were the two big dogs on uh, for this for this movie. Let's talk about. Submariner Brian. Now this is a character that I always wonder, like, how they're gonna make this brother look with the <laughs> wings, you know? And we always agreed, Brian, way back, how this character needed to be different from everybody else, look different from everybody else, be different, and act like someone who has been around for many, many years. Hawkman. Anyway. <laughs> Every time Brian that he came on screen from his introduction where we can barely see him when he's tossing a helicopter around, I was hooked. Hooked. Um when he finally showed up at Wakanda to talk to uh Ramanda and Sh and, and Shuri, uh you believed his the requests and what he wanted done. His character delivered on the promises he said would occur if this wasn't done. Especially when he came when he was on the beach and told Ramanda, this doesn't happen. I'm this is a rap. And, and, and it's crazy how that happened. Um, Brian, this was a, uh, I am looking forward to seeing the Submariner again in something else. I don't know what yet. I don't know if I'm interested in seeing a Submariner film, Brian, but I am certainly interested in seeing the Submariner again. Um, Tina Quarter's performance uh, for this character was spot on and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think he, I think he is the lead of this movie. I think he is whatever you want to call it. He, I think he's the character you most leave the movie thinking about in a movie that had a number of high level performances. I loved it. I love the characterization. I loved, I loved the confidence. Like he doesn't really raise his voice, but because he's been around for so long and he can, you know, his powers are incredible. His approach to these scenes is like, he's not overconfident. He's just confident. He's like, I've seen yeah, yeah. this all before. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm ready for anything. But then make no mistake, the one thing I'm passionate about above all else is protecting my city and my people. And I will do that to no, you know, to, with no limit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I thoroughly enjoy the character. I, I had a very brief moment where I was worried they were going to kill him. And I was that, and I, with that, with spoiler alert, that explosion at the end, I was like, "If you guys do this, I'm, I might be done. I might be done." And then I was like, "All right, he's 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 alive. He's he's all right." But um, I think the character is set up perfectly for what they will want and need him to do from here. I think the origin and exposition was one of the better ones they've done. Yes, glad they gave it full ride in this movie and didn't short it um i didn't mind seeing him as a kid i didn't mind seeing him be born i didn't mind seeing the origin of mutation and what he grew into like i think it was all necessary um i loved his power i loved his vengeance but i also loved his soft side i think one of my yeah, favorite yeah. scenes is when he's taking shuri through talakan and they're sitting together afterwards and they're having a heart to heart conversation and he's not He's not being some cold bastard in that scene. Yeah. Like he's he's empathizing with her talking about the loss of Chichala. 
Yeah. And then he says only the most broken people can be great leaders. And he's speaking from experience. And I, yeah, yeah. So I think the balance that Huerta found in sort of being both warm in sort of a dangerous way, but then yes. incredibly, incredibly violent and um, menacing mm -hmm. is great. I mean, I, the thing I kept wrapping my head around, I was like, so he and Diego and Luna were on the same TV show? <laughs> ah, like, yes. Oh. That's messed yes. up. That's, that's like unfair. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, no, I think great performance. And we've talked about Marvel having the, he's not a true villain, but we've talked about Marvel having a villain problem. And like in a weird way, I feel like Marvel is now in the stretch where whether it's, you know, Wen Wu or whether it's Gore the God Butcher or whether it's certainly in this case, a Submariner, I feel like the antagonists are having a decent run here. Yeah. Kang. I, I actually, it's as we talked about, it's the heroes who are struggling a little bit right yes, now. Yes, I yes, think yes. the antagonists are doing quite well. So this guy, I think, slots in incredibly for the future. I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, Shuri. Black Panther. Oh, before we leave it, though, you mentioned okay. the you mentioned the the visual of him, and I talked about my one critique, which you don't have a problem with the flying effect. I will say this: this is a character that. You know, they took some heat when the first when the concept art came out and some of the first renderings of this came out. Mm -hmm. But you know, they kept a lot of the comics accurate elements. And as Ryan Kluger said, it's kind of a silly looking drawn character when you get right down to it. Yeah, I think they pulled it off pretty well. I yeah. don't. I didn't spend any minutes in this film being distracted by the wings. No, on his no, me neither. And I like the fact that you know he used the wings in fighting. I like the fact that Shuri attacked the wings in the final fight. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I think they they pulled off something kind of improbable with making the features of the physical features of Namor actually seem like a positive as opposed to a distraction. I thought when I was watching, I was actually thinking, we have come a long way since Brian Singer X Men, where they were making fun of the yellow suit because they didn't feel like they could actually credibly put the X-Men in their comics accurate costumes and have audiences not laugh at them, which is basically yeah, yeah. And I felt like in this movie, they're like, yeah, we, we've graduated to the point where they can they can put these features on these characters that I feel like diehard comics fans would have been irate if there were no wings. Yeah, of course. Right? Because that's a part of his character. And they can say- And the like, pointy yeah, ears. Gonna, yeah, we're going to do it and it's not going to look silly. And we're, we're fine having it be in the action scenes and it makes sense and it works. So yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy it very much. He's, the, he's, it's weird. Like, I I think he's the MVP of the movie because he had yeah, a big I think part. so. Like, I, I would have said, so like, too. Angela Bassett per scene probably is a match for him, but he's just mm -hmm. in the movie a lot more and he has more to do. So yeah. I, he, more than anyone else to me, picked up the slack for not having Chadwick Bo And it, that's why in a weird way, I couldn't help but think, man, if we had, if we had- That would have been a, a, that, 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 that I mean? dialogue. It made me like think about it more. Yeah. Yeah. I am uh, understanding of those who feel or believe his absence was felt. Therefore, the movie wasn't as a, wasn't as good as they thought it could have been had he been in this movie. Or the lack of a Black Panther, um, and that says a lot, Brian. That that people feel this way because it says about it talks about Shuri being the Black Panther, which was something that we always knew was going to happen. Where well, we knew from jump, there was no surprise. We knew that Shuri was going to take up the mantle of, um, of Black Panther. And we knew this from years ago. Yeah, and how did we feel? Like I felt like there was a brief, or like there was like a little corner of the universe that was like, maybe it's like Peter Nwongo. And then it was that brief moment to like, maybe it's M'Baku and like, but, but Shuri would have been an overwhelming betting favorite from day one that it would have yeah. been. Yeah. yeah. I'm mean, I'm pretty sure they thought of it, of these these scenarios. But ultimately, it would have been just not everybody can be Black Panther. This can't, this mantle can't be given to just anyone, 
right? Because then what what is the what is this meaning? What is his value really? Well, they kind of drew attention to that when she solves the herb. And Rui Williams is like, yo, can I get some of that? <laughs> they just ignored her. They were like, okay. <laughs> but that's yeah. the point, right? It's not yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um again, I spoke about her previously in another show. Um, but um I like the storyline that they set up for her. I knew Brian that this we were gonna end up with Shuri taking up the mantle. I knew from jump that she was going to figure out the necessary, uh, I guess, formula for creating the synthetic herb at some point. I knew all these things were coming. I just wanted to see how um, they arrived to that point. Um, And I was all for it, Brian, until she became Black Panther and and was fighting. I just didn't believe it. Hmm. Again, it's like what I think about her being Black Panther, I'm pretty sure T'Chaka had fighting training. You know, she had some training. <laughs> she, Shuri was never, we've never seen you. Shuri yep. in that position. And had we seen it, perhaps it would have eased my mind off of it, showing her actually training. You wanted the training montage. You wanted, you I wanted, have to, you wanted I got to <laughs> see it. You just don't get powers and know how to fight. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Just like, just like um, when when Zod told Superman, I was fighting for years. Where'd you learn how to fight? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what makes it like, how can these, you know, you can't be a dude that knows how to fight that person that doesn't know how to fight. And sure, Shuri had a lot of power, a lot of reflexes and all that stuff, but it doesn't translate into fighting. So that's what I had a problem with. Uh, I completely agree. I think her best moment, actually, though, I will say that when she when she becomes Black Panther, one of the things that I had remarked on in the trailer that I think proved true was I did note that there was like her costume was sort of black with gold, and I kind of asked at the time. I said, "Is that what she's kind of got the Killmonger color scheme?" I did like when she drops in to sort of the the meeting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then she has that conversation with Mbaku and she is enraged and she says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I want to kill him and you're going to help me. <laughs> that I thought was the high point actually of her I agree. version of this because it was I like, agree. you know, she's on the wrong path, but the movie does a pretty good job of making you, of selling you on the idea of, I think, think she's gonna do the right thing but i'm not like a hundred percent percent yeah and so i think i i enjoyed that angry aspect of her character but i agree that like and i think the movie knew it because that's why they took away namor's powers basically they basically you know they they had her fight clark Kent, not superman mm-hmm. But I agree with you that even in that state with his experience, he probably, and he kind of did. I mean, he did impale her. So he he probably would have beaten her anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I, I tend to agree with you that like, I don't know what the solution though would have been. Would it have been to put M'Baku on the beach with her? Like put, some, put the Midnight Angels with her? Because I don't know that that would have worked either. Like could that last fight have been anything other than one-on-one and worked? Even if she was not, you know, even if, as I said, that's why I, you know, I made that Empire Strikes Back comparison because, like I said, Luke is not trained really when he goes up against Vader and that, and that's part of what makes that duel spectacular, right? And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that would have been that idea here of like an inexperienced Black Panther up against this guy one on one. Yeah, I don't think you could have brought in a supporting character to help her. So the question yeah. would have been like, do you have her lose? But we, like, do you have her do something else other than? what she did which is kind of you know they take away his powers and then kind of she beats him with an explosion as opposed to a fight yeah Um, i don't know i don't i couldn't think of a like a great way to solve that but i agree with you that she felt awfully fully realized for having put on the suit 30 seconds early yeah 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 um so yeah i think black panther's uh presence in terms of the character well, I guess so the moniker of the Black Panther wasn't really uh, uh, an emphatic 
presence or like the way Chadwick had it. So that was again lacking, um, and her performance didn't really do it. Didn't do anything to um, bring bring it up to me. Uh, for, for, in, for in my opinion, it you know it it's tough because I I feel like Letitia Wright is straddling two different roles in this movie in the sense that she's you know in the first movie she is the younger sister sidekick <clears throat> and she still has to embody some of those characteristics in this movie which she does when she's kind of being playful with Riri Williams and kind of goofing off on the mission and but then she also has to embody this royal character right this who has to rise to the occasion as a hero not an easy job i i think that i i left the movie liking the character more because it had more depth in my opinion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i i like you said i i don't know that like it solved the black panther vacuum that was left by t'challa so here's my question for you with what you just said it was a long movie but if we mm -hmm. say, let, let's say we get our wish, we, we dial down the iron heart, we get rid of some of the, the Everett Ross, um, Valentina stuff. Would you have wanted then her to solve the herb and introduce her version of the angry Panther earlier in the movie so that she could then be defeated and then have to train I would guess with the exiled Okoye would probably be the logical trainer for this to get her ready for the rematch. Would that have been, you know, almost almost borrowing the the Rocky Creed franchise Listen, approach to this? Would that have worked better? I think I would have preferred that over some of the stuff we got in the movie. Okay. That could have the time you spent for for the entirety of this this movie, the twenty minutes over, I would have spent it on that. Cause I think fighting, I, I think fighting has lost its essence of what it means to be a fighter, you know, and knowing how to fight. There's discipline in that. Not everybody can fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Well, it's fair. I mean, because it's like, I mean, it's like I know, I know Sean Chi is not your favorite movie, but that movie went out of its way to basically say he was trained from till the, to the time he could walk. Yeah to adulthood and you're basically saying like yeah like sure he's kind of you know an expert martial artist in minutes with by taking the herb i i get it i get the the non sequitur there yeah how do you feel about the shuri black like we know from the end credit scene that she is kind of caretaking this role a little bit we know yeah, that yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah. a bad thing yeah. but presumably in the secret wars cycle she's it as the black panther am i missing something like what else? well it's quite possible that there may, may be a misdirect there and that when we do get secret wars the child will be a grown dude oh the, okay. in the panther the, 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 like when we multiverse time jump work and he when yes when he's he's going to be fully grown when we see the 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 suit it will be him uh, that's what i'm hoping for anyway i mean this that's the thing is like to me this movie is on balance this movie is a win because the submariner worked i, I don't even care like in some ways i don't even care about the rest of the movie the fact that this character was pulled off and i'm confident it's being played by the right guy i, I think is a massive massive positive for the mcu oh yeah definitely definitely let's see man let's see if they can keep this going hopefully again i don't want to see a submariner film i don't think i want to see a submariner film not yet no. just like i want i don't want to see an aquaman film and admit it anyway i don't know but let's see um that's our show um and we'll see you next time to talk about the supporting cast which is a very uh um interesting conversation because there's a lot to talk about there right